I don't know if you've ever rebuked Jesus or not. Don't tell us if you have. <laughs> it seems like a really bad idea to me. But that's exactly what Peter does. Now, what's going on? Like, he's just said you're the Messiah, which means you're the king, you're in charge, you're God's anointed person. He's just, Jesus has just explained the gospel. <laughs> I'm going to be, I'm going to suffer and be handed over and die for you and be raised from the dead. And Peter, like there's a disconnect. Even though he said the right words, he rebukes Jesus. What does he not understand? What does he not get? We know the Messiah is supposed to die for us and be raised. Why does Peter rebuke Jesus for saying something like that? Well, if we're going to understand that, we need a little history. If you're a history buff, this is for you. If you're not, it's still for you. We've got to rewind 167 years or so before Jesus was born. Still in Jerusalem. But Rome wasn't the foreign oppressor of that day. There was a different guy. I'm going to say his name. You don't have to remember this, okay? He was from northern Egypt, and his name was Antiochus Epiphanes IV. Get that straight, because there were several of them. The fourth. Antiochus comes rolling into Jerusalem and takes over. People were constantly doing that, and he was just the, the dominator of the day. When he got there, he wanted to really show the disregard he had for the people and their religion. So he, a non-Jewish Gentile, got himself a pig. You know this is already going badly. In Judaism, pigs were about as unclean as it gets. So Antiochus gets himself a pig takes that pig and goes marching into the temple in Jerusalem. He didn't stop in the courtyard. He went all the way into the holiest place, to the sanctuary. Guess what he did there? He threw that pig on the altar and sacrificed it to his God, not to theirs. So you've got a foreign guy, a Gentile. They didn't get to come into that space. Their very presence, like, they would kill you if you came that far and you weren't Jewish. This guy comes in, unclean himself, with an unclean animal, spills its blood all over God's altar, desecrating the entire place and mocking the Jewish people, sacrificing to what they considered was a false god. Nice guy, right? Kind of want to go have lunch and hang out a little bit, I'm sure. You can imagine he wasn't making friends. Very quickly, the Jewish people began to think, try to figure out how they could overcome this guy. Like, this guy's got to go, and we've got to recover our sacred space. Takes a few years, but when we get around to 164, I believe it is, a guy named Judas Maccabeus, lots of Judases in like in the Bible and in Jewish history. This one, Judas Maccabeus, was a priest, rather a feisty priest. His nickname was the Hammer, not because he was into construction, but because when he went into battle, a hammer was his weapon of choice. Judas Maccabeus gets up a posse, and they go to war against Antiochus and his armies. They practice guerrilla warfare, because you know a bunch of untrained priests <laughs> are probably not going to handle a full-on invading army. So they got creative, but they also developed momentum. And they came to the point when the battle came to a head, they won. Antiochus was defeated, the pagans were kicked out of Jerusalem, and they cleansed the temple. Remember, it had been defiled. They had a party, massive celebration. God had sent someone to save them. He killed their enemies, and he sanctified the temple. 
He made it holy again. The celebration is one you've probably heard of. It's still observed by observant Jews. It's called Hanukkah, celebrating the Festival of Lights when the Maccabean revolt kicked the bad guys out of Jerusalem. That's the sort of Savior Peter was looking for. So when Jesus says, we're going to go to Jerusalem where Rome has, its, has taken over and I'm going to die, in Peter's head, that doesn't compute. Jesus, I just got the words out of my mouth. <laughs> you ever say that to Jesus? You're the Messiah. You're the chosen one. That means we go to Jerusalem. It doesn't mean you die. It means you kill people. Do we need to do a little history? <laughs> you, know, you can imagine, like Peter's walking. Jesus. Remember these other? Like there are plenty. Judas Maccabees was only one. There were plenty of folks who kind of put themselves in this role. If they failed, if they died, it just means they weren't the Messiah. There's a rather well-known New Testament scholar who's kind of famous for saying, in this period, a dead Messiah was a false Messiah. And Jesus takes all of that and turns it on its head. I'm the Messiah. Here's what that means. I've got to die. I've got to suffer, and I've got to die, and I've got to be raised from the dead. And Peter's over there losing his mind because he's expecting a warrior king. That's why Remember when, when the soldiers come for Jesus? What does Peter do? Dude pulls out a sword and cuts off somebody's ear. Why? Because he was expecting a fight. Judas Maccabeus got his fight. Where's mine? 